In this video, we are going to review question characteristics and components. Uh, basically, what we're going to be doing is looking at various question formats and discussing approaches to attack them or tear them apart, if you will. So when we think about question characteristics and components, there's a variety of areas, alternatives, however you want to look at it. You know, a lot of times people think, okay, I know the content, then I get to the questions, and it's like it's another language. And so what we're going to do with this is talk a bit about how to translate effectively, if you will, the questions. You know, how to recognize what you're being asked, ignore what's meant to be a distractor, and things of that nature. Now, formats and variables, I want to address this as well. Um, it's late October 2020 as of this recording. And this video is being recorded in part for the January 2nd, 2021 and beyond exam. As of last week, when I emailed PMI headquarters, they have not released a new PMP exam PDF that talks about duration, questions, question formats, etc. And they said they're probably not going to do so until somewhere in December. Now, as a result, um, I'm going to speculate some. We've heard some rumors about question format changes like choose all that apply, um, drag and drop, analyze graphics, which, you know, I'm of the opinion that's probably been in there for a while. I can't say what I might have seen on an exam, but analyzing a graphic is definitely reasonable to expect. And so as we go through this video, I am going to mention some possible speculation on some things to potentially help uh, help your analysis and interpretation. Now, first when we think about the component distractor, uh, like I was on, on a call yesterday with somebody on the West Coast and they said, okay, what do you mean by distractor? And they were basically saying, you know, when I read these questions, I, you know, they said, I feel dumb. And I said, well, you're not dumb. I said, you know, it's, it, it's like a whole other language. So a distractor could be put in there. That could be something you commonly do at work that doesn't necessarily align with the exam. In other words, it might not necessarily be a best practice. It could be something that's simply commonly misinterpreted, like the WBS people commonly think is just a high-level schedule, when truth of, truth of the matter, it's a scope thing that drives schedule, cost, quality, etc. So I would expect at least one or two distractors in, in, in a question and four answers. And what they tend to do is they tend to pair up, you know, like if you buy it on a certain part of the question incorrectly, meaning I think this is important, there's an answer that's going to align with that, and that answer is not what's best. So, um, you know, so potentially expect one or two distractors in the situation itself, and then, uh, you know, they typically will connect to one of your answers. Now, I say, you know, one or two distractors, a lot of times people say to me, man, I didn't expect so many situational questions. And I'll tell them in a class, you should expect up to 200 situational questions. To be blunt, you're dropped in the middle of a crap storm, what's the best way out? And the perfect way might not be there, so you have to choose possibly the least worst of four options. So you could have a lot of distractors. Now, common terminology could be another thing. And so, you know, if we think about, for example, like if I said the remaining budget versus the estimate to complete. Well, the estimate to complete means a very specific thing versus the remaining budget is kind of a generic phrase. So the general rule of thumb is if there's a, a PMI style term versus something generic on the street, so to speak, you're probably better going with the PMI style term. Now, too much information is what I can do if I make this video go too long. But basically, too much information in a question is what they can throw at you, and that, that kind of ties in with the distractors, you know, things that don't necessarily matter. Like, for example, a change request question. You know, they could hit you with something like, 
you're 98% done, you're getting ready for closing, the sponsor looks you up and tells you that they need this new feature added or the project outcome is not going to be usable and that um, it's not going to cause budget or schedule impact. Okay, who is the sponsor to say it's not going to cause budget or schedule impact? One, that's a great distractor. And two, by the time you get rid of all the garbage in that question, it basically translates the sponsor comes to you as you're close to being done with the project. They say something has to be put in or the thing's not necessarily going to be usable. What do you do next? And then in some of our stakeholder videos and content, that's where we've got the step-by-step -step that you go through. Just because they say it has to be done ASAP and immediately, and they throw a bunch of stuff in there trying to make you feel like, I got to do this, you know, don't bite on all that too much information stuff. Now, the next is wrong area or wrong point in time. So, you know, if we think about it, there's, there's a lot of connectivity across these 10 knowledge areas. You know, risk is an input to, to scheduling, to budgeting, to procurement, among other things. But if we think about it, and I'm going to pull out my handy-dandy quick reference guide here, you know, wrong area or wrong point in time. So if I ask you about something and I'm describing, for example, creating the scope statement, I saw a student recently bring up a question they got wrong in this. You know, the question was asking about the scope statement, and it said something to the effect of all of the following would potentially be included in the scope statement except, and they said cost estimate, or actually cost estimates was what would not be included, and they thought it should be included. Well, if I'm doing defined scope, which gives me a scope statement. From there, I create the WBS. Once I have the WBS, I can do things like start to build a schedule, cost estimates, a budget, etc. So I wouldn't necessarily have cost estimates as part of my scope statement. You know, that's going to be part more part of the overall plan. So when you think about, you know, like in the schedule knowledge area from start to finish, you know, if I said, you know, what do you need to define activities? and I said duration estimates being one of the answers. I would get rid of that because again if I go back to this define activities as my second pink process in the schedule chapter duration estimates as a couple after that. So I gotta have activities to get the duration. I don't have to have duration to get the activities. So think about where you're at and that's going to be very key with this. You know if you can recognize which color you're in as far as which knowledge area, what process you're doing, what comes before it, what comes after it, what you should have created so far as far as the main primary things, what you're getting ready to do next. You know, that's a good, a good spot or position or mentality to have, if you will. Now, when we think about question formats, um, we have the select, select not or accept, that one tends to drive people crazy or want to make them drink or curse. All or a combination of the answers, we'll talk a bit about that. Situational, like I said, you should expect up to 200 situational questions. 200, you're dropped in the middle of a mess. What's the best or least worst way out? And then chicken or the egg is a sequence type thing. So like this uh, quick reference guide. If I said, you know, you're sequencing activities, what do you need to do this? Well, what came right before it? Activities and milestones. Or you're sequencing activities, what do you do next? Duration estimating. Um, and then none of the answers is not, not a popular answer anymore, but technically, you know, we'll talk briefly about it. And then the calculation. Now, the calculation questions are ones that People tend to overanalyze, really get wrapped around the axles in their study because it's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I got to have these calculations down. And I hate to say this, but literally, it's like you put your hand on the mouse at the test center and it literally has like a biometric reader on it and goes, okay, yeah, you study this stuff, you get your arms around the math, you're going to get maybe two of them. Now, 
that's not really happening, but literally that's what it feels like. Because I have a lot of people tell me, man, I spent so much time studying those formulas, those calculations, and I, you know, I studied way more than, than I needed to. Uh, so anyway, those are some of the things we're going to talk about in this video. Now, the select question. And this is a relatively simple duration, uh, question, but, you know, milestone is what duration? Zero. You just select what fits. And so, like, uh, at one point in time, I was a consultant at a place rolling out a PMO, and I was helping people get ready for the PMP exam. Three of my students at the same company took the test the same day. And one of them stopped showing up for our study groups every day over lunch because I guess he thought he was in better shape than, than, he, than, than the other two. Guess which one failed the test? Well, I walked up to him the day after they took the test, and I said, how did we do, guys? And I said, I, I said that, and I heard, oh. And I said, what? And the guy goes, a milestone is what duration? I said, zero. And he goes, I didn't think it could be that straightforward. Well, here's the deal. You over-prepare. You learn how to translate understanding project management content into question format, uh, almost like another language. It you know, success is expected. Now, select not or accept. So this is a blah, 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 accept. And so these questions will drive you crazy, especially starting out or when you start to get mentally tired. Like starting out your first 10 on the test, do they want this or the opposite of this? And then as you start to get mentally tired, kind of the same thing, if you will. Um, you know, and that might be a good spot to take a break. Now, this blah, 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 except, you know, all the following are areas of communication management except. That format lends itself to translation in other languages. So, as a result, it's a pretty popular format because if somebody takes the test in Spanish, at least as of this recording, they get an English window and a Spanish window, and the assumption is the translation is accurate. Now, what I tell people with a question like this is you want to look at this, and if you're not drawn to one answer, then basically say one of these things is not like the other. I think there was a 90s rock song where that was kind of the chorus. One of these things is not like the other over and over. But, you know, if you can't say decisively, I think this is it, then try to group three things together, and the thing that is dissimilar or doesn't fit with the other three, ask yourself, does that seem like that's the answer? So in this case, all the following are areas of communication management except. Okay, well, manage communication sounds like one. Monitor communication sounds like one. Perform quantitative risk analysis. Hmm. Uh, that probably does not fit. D, plan communications management. Now, let me say this. Don't just automatically assume, because in this case something has communication in it, that it's fair game. If all four had communication in them, then what you would do is you would go back to this in your head, plan communication management, manage communication, monitor communication as an example. Now, from there, we get into all or a combination of the answers. Now, this is where we possibly have some of that rumor being realized or where I feel like there is a higher probability of it showing up. So first, let's talk about all of the answers, and then we'll talk about a combination. Bottom line is, if you, know, if you, if, if you look at, if you have four choices, which is the exam, at least as, as of January 1st, 2021, January 2nd, 2021, you know, we, it will not, it will surprise me, it will surprise me if there is not some format adjustment to the questions. But right now, best of four options, and I think that's still going to be the majority of the questions come 2021. If you are looking at answers and you feel really good about two answers and the third answer, you know, the old joke, I, you know, I wouldn't kick it out of bed for eating crackers. You know, in other words, I, I can tolerate it. It, it fits. It, I'm not in love with it, but it fits. 
If that's the case and you ha have all of the answers, that's not a bad option. Now, if, and I will say, be sure to apply the PMI theory. You know, so like, like you, you'll hear in my other videos, I'll talk about the PMI land zip code. So put your blinders on from work and reality and get in that PMI land zip code mentality for the test. And, you know, and if an answer seems to fit there, potentially it fits. Now, what if they gave you, say, five options or six options, and they said choose all that apply? If that's the case, um, I would say, you know, I, I would say select any that seem to fit, you know, with at least a 50% feel for accuracy. You know, the obvious things that make it a bit easy, like if I said, you know, if I gave you some situation and by the time you got rid of all the distractors, it translated to what are the scope processes or which, you know, select all that are scope processes. And as an example, if you had six options, but only four of them were ones that were listed here, you would select just those four, for example. And yes, those select all that fit instead of just the best one are not going to be fun, I'm going to tell you. I know I was talking to a PMP last week that's even older school than me, and he said when he did it, they had five options. And commonly it was A, B, and C were three different answers. D was all of the answers, and E was like A and C, for example. Um, I don't know that they're going to quite go there, but he said those were a lot of fun sarcastically, and I would agree with him. That, that does not sound like fun. Now, when we think about situational, this is what you're going to see the bulk of. And then you could have distractors and timeline and things like that. So the situational for format, basically what PMI is trying to do there per listening to employers, you know, you can go back to work and pull up a tool and it can tell you the status of a budget or a schedule. You know, it can tell you what a CPI or an SPI is. So what they're trying to do is get it more of a situation where, no pun intended, where you can read the situation and when there's a problem, you know what to do. You know what's best, you know what to do next, you know what would fix it, things like that. So like in this case, I'm going to suggest you read the last sentence first so you can see what you're being asked, then that's going to frame the situation. Now that's an important piece here, so bear with me a moment. Your brain in that test is kind of like a cell phone battery with a GPS app. And if you, do, if you don't know anything about GPS or global positioning system apps, what it amounts to, if you have it on and you leave it on all day, your, your cell phone's going to go dead quick because literally, I don't know if it's every second or faster than that, but that cell phone is pinging some satellite. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? And so if you start out reading the question at the top, you get to the bottom, you read the last sentence, you see what you're being asked, now you have to go back and reread it, you know, that's going to wear your brain out quicker than read the last sentence, then the situation. And you still might read the question two or three times, but that's better than three or four. So what document do you, want to fir do you first want to see or create if it doesn't exist about the project foundation? Now, the minute I read that, I start to think foundation, charter, without even looking at the four answers. And that's a good position to be in. You know, when you read the, the last sentence, you read the situation, you're starting to think about what a good answer looks like even before you see your choices. So you've taken over an existing project, Discover It has uh, suffered major scope creep because the former PM couldn't say no to the sponsor, and it lacked enough supporting documentation. <sighs> what do you want to see to begin with, basically? Yeah, a risk list would be good, but the charter, you know, um, the charter is, is deeper, if you will, in the foundation of things than a risk list. A communication management plan or communications plan and budget would come after the charter. So the charter is going to be key because that's going to drive identified risks, at least initially. It might drive any 
any budget or time parameters, etc. So the charter would be the best what's there, for example. Now when we get to the chicken or egg, that's where this being in your head or on your canvas in the dry erase board is going to be very popular. So in this case, what comes next? What did you just do? Things like that. So this could be what process comes next? What do you create next? Or you're getting ready to do this. What did you just do? Or what document did you just create? In this case, what comes before sequence activities? Well, duration estimates comes after. Cost is totally different knowledge areas. Um, Develop project management plan is integration. So you can make a little bit of an argument there, but eh, really it's going to be the schedule itself going into the project management plan. But And this would be before, not after. So define activities. You've got to have activities, then I figure out what order they occur in. So there you go. C would be the best what's there. Now, none of the answers, to be honest, I don't expect that to show up. Um, you know, I mean, if you're... You know, if you were asked, you know, and I'm going to make up a sarcastic question here, but if you were asked, which of the following tools would you likely use to assemble a television stand? You know, um, a UFO, a bottle of water, a car, or an airline ticket. <laughs> I don't even I couldn't even repeat those right now without rewinding this video. None of those remotely fit for how to assemble a TV stand. So if you saw a question and you had four answers that were literally all that off and you had a none of the answers, I'd go with none of the answers. But again, honestly, I don't expect that to show up. Now, as of January 2nd, 2021, there are some new exam formats expected expected and as I said earlier in the video PMI has not released the exam handbook or as the bulk of the world calls it a PDF yet uh, but that's supposed to be released somewhere in December per the boss of the boss of the PMP exam uh, replying to an email of mine last week so we do expect there to be graphics to be analyzed and I'm a believer that that's been in there for a while you know where there's an image and you have to analyze what's going on with it or drag things into place with it you could also have, like, for example, here's five processes, here's four boxes, drag them into the right order, things like that. Like one of our uh, community of PM trainers was saying the other day, well, heck, I wish they did a lot more drag into place stuff. That's pretty straightforward. Select all that apply. So that could be here's five or possibly more options. Select all that fit. And, um, and, you know, and then th those are the big things we're, we're hearing rumors about. I say rumors, uh, <clears throat> you know, seen various slides, slides from PMI and things like that, but not necessarily committal, if you will. Now, once we get into January 2nd and beyond and that exam handbook comes out, if we do have a new video for this, it'll be available on the YouTube channel probably as a follow-up to this video as an example. 